too late. I've already summoned meteor. <laughs> Okay. Welcome everyone to episode 5 of L2R2, a PlayStation podcast. My name is Fonzi. I'm joined by my co-host, UK Brub from another mum, Callum Monroe. Callum, how are you? Very good. Uh, excited for today. Uh, some Resident Evil on the horizon, which is always good yes. for me. Yeah, I saw when I woke up, uh, was it Tuesday, Monday? I saw that that was there. I was like, oh, Callum's going to eat this shit up. Yeah, it was all these different yeah. impressions. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. What uh, what was your what was your week like? Did you play any games? Work on games? What'd you do? Um, yeah, I play. Um, I haven't. Again, it's just been sort of one of those months. Really, I haven't been able to play too much. But um, I did a few more tutorials on Dreams. Um, messed around a little bit with some of the some of the community created games. Um, I played one. Uh, I think it's one of the featured ones, so you might have played as well, where you you sort of run around a museum with a baseball bat, and you've got to try, try and break all these exhibits. No, that um, sounds awesome. I think it's something to do. I think it starts with like this cutscene, and it's some artist who's been like rejected from showing his work <laughs> at a museum. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, so you, you run around this museum. You have got a baseball bat, and you've got to make. It's like kind of like a stealth game where you got to accumulate um, sort of the amount of money that you're um, causing this place. Um, oh, smashing gotcha. Up and stuff. So that was quite fun. <laughs> and yeah, and I did another tutorial, um, which was good. Slowly, sort of. You know, I find I find they're quite long winded, so it's quite hard to just sort of stick through through them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I also started um, for some reason uh, Resident Evil One, the the remake on PS4. Oh, uh, I never day, got so. into that one. I, I thought about it because I have it too, or like on the yeah on PS4. But what are you thinking yeah. of it? About yeah, it? I love. I, I the last time I played it was uh, well. I, I mean, I've I've sort of tried playing it a few times on ps4 but um never really sat down properly and got through it but i, I played it years and years ago the, the remake when it sort of first came out um and yeah really liking it um it's got that classic resident evil vibe i started it on normal difficulty which is like the hardest you can choose at the start wow. uh, and straight away put it down to the easiest because it's, <laughs> it's it's like classic resident evil in the way that like you need to know exactly what you're coming up against because otherwise you don't know you know, what items you need, whether to use a herb or whether to kill this zombie or whatever. So it was stressing me out too much. So I, I, I uh, put it on the easiest difficulty, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. No, there's uh, yeah. plenty of them that I need to go back and revisit. Uh, and they've remade them. Like, uh, that reminds me of Resident Evil Zero, I want to say. It was like a GameCube yeah. game originally. But yeah. I think now you can yeah. get it everywhere. But that one seemed really yeah. neat. And then, yeah, that remake. Um, I just like, I want them to use this current engine to go back and remake all those. Because, like, the movement is where I want mm. it in, this, in the new RE engine. So it's like, just do that mm. for all of them. And then I'll jump in. Yeah, the, the fixed camera. I'm normally a fan of the fixed camera angles in the way that it always scares me because that's sort of like sure if you're if, if you know that there's something coming and then the camera angle suddenly changes it sort of makes it a bit more tense but it's it's kind of annoying especially after spending so much time with the resident evil 2 remake there's lots of times where because it's like if you if you run and the camera angle changes if you sort of keep your finger on the analog stick he will run in the direction you're going but if you let go which you can do suddenly when you see it change it's just sort of like your natural instinct to let go and redo it you'll end up going in the opposite direction so it's quite annoying sometimes oh, yikes. But, um but yeah no it's it's a great game I, I love resident evil and it, it's mostly stemmed from when i got the platinum resident evil 2 i kind of want to platinum them all but nice. they're such difficult uh games to 100 percent. yeah good luck with I'll, that <laughs> i'll give it my best shot <laughs> Nice. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned dreams. Um, I didn't get to play much more this week. Uh, I do want to get back in, but um, I've just kind of, uh, I know I, I burnt myself out instantly by like just getting frustrated because I'm not manipulating mm. the things I want to do. But I know in my mind, it's like, oh, the only way you get better as like is by keeping up with, you know, yeah. the tutorials and yeah. working with it. But it's, I'm the yeah. kind of guy where if I do get frustrated right away, I like, I'll, you know, either quit or I have to get, take a break and then I got to come back to yeah. it. But I do yeah, want to nah, make that's something. That's understandable. Um, but there's a lot there. And I do, at least, I think it's cool where you can just kind of keep up with what the community is creating. So maybe every week you jump in to just see what people are making there. And yeah. hopefully that, you know, uh, reignites something in you to create something else. But, yeah. yep. You know, I did play a lot was, uh, so Fortnite did a new season two update. And yeah, I've seen I've seen that. Yeah, they kind of get me in every couple of months. Uh, my mm. nephew, he's like eight years old, and he loves Fortnite. Like that's all he thinks mm. about, and so that's what we'll kind of like bond on. And so I'll jump in just to see what's going on, so I can like know what to talk with him about. And then I end up getting sucked in, 
And the same thing this time where I like, I, they got my money. I paid for a, you know, a battle pass, bought some figures or some characters. And like, I'm just in it. Like the, the way they added, they're adding like these cool single player components to the battle Royale, which just keeps you okay. engaged. And, and, um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really terrible at building still, but, uh, yeah. the shooting I do like just running around and, yeah. well, I saw shooting. you got, you got a victory the other day, didn't you? I saw yeah, you, you yeah. That, yeah. Which for yeah, now so, it's, so. it's easier to come by. It's still hard, but like back in the day it was like frustrating because like this is a game for kids and i can't get to number one yeah. like it was very fucking frustrating oh, yeah. but... so, so, some of them are just i think that's why i stopped playing multiplayer games just because it you, you know there's just a new set of skills that these kids have yeah. got and it's just um it's just important and, and you just don't have the time to you know spend that much time to get that good at it so i mean when, oh. when, when when we were kids it was easy to you know spend loads of time with like your call of duties and all these sort of multiplayer games to um to, to you know get good at them but now i just I'm just a washed up uh, <laughs> ga- gamer now. I'll just stick yeah. to my single player games. <laughs> and that's the thing. When you enter these lobbies, that's who you're playing against. Kids who are like, this is, you know, I got home from school and I'm just doing this. Or, yeah. you know, I got suspended. I'm just doing this. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, with the building too, like I, I had to switch up. I learned from watching my nephews because they were, there's settings you can do with the building where you can add a button to each controller to like create a ramp or a wall. And so they're just like quickly tapping on the controller and building these, these skyscrapers. I'm like, how are they doing that? So I had to watch them and then change my setting and then like try and change my brain to understand how to build faster just based on them. And they're like, okay, grandpa, like they're just quickly building stuff and (laughs) getting on their skateboard and riding off. But like, yeah, so I had to just learn how they were doing it, and it's 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 a trip. Yeah. It's really cool. It's a fun game. Like I think it gets a bad rap because it's it's the biggest fucking video game out right now. But it's there yeah. for a reason because like everything is pretty yeah. pinpoint. Like the gameplay, the art yeah, style, yeah, yeah. like they're yeah, experts. It's, it's, it's it's always I've never heard anybody talking about it. You know, playing badly or or whatever. It's always just been a more stylistic um, or just like a bandwagon thing, like you said, just because it's so big. Sure. It's easy to hate on it, but I'm um, so the, when you were watching them play, how were they holding the controllers? Were they holding them like you know, like a normal? I mean, standard they holding, way, were they, but were they doing the? No, they weren't grabbing? doing like that. Yeah, I've never seen them, yeah. and I think they would uh, they would laugh me out of the room if they saw me doing that. Yeah. Like, hey, hey kids, <laughs> almost like doing the granny like basketball throw where you just kind of yeah. like between your legs throw it up in the air. Um, no, they're yeah. holding it regular, but there's an option where you can assign. Uh, every like option to build to a button rather than like select yeah. it manually, which was yeah. what I was doing. And it's yeah, so slow. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so I learned that from them. But it's, it's yeah. funny to like put my brain in theirs where as a kid, you're just maybe more susceptible to like learning these different ways of playing. But like yeah. in my mind, because it wasn't in the, like I couldn't see the buttons. It wasn't like a natural way to select a weapon kind yeah. of thing. I wasn't willing to change my, my way of no. play, but they were like yeah, right yeah. off the bat. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the thing as well. When you, when you get older, you just everything has to be like instant. Like like you're saying with dreams, like you just have to instantly be able to to sort of do it. And it's like um, uh, uh, my brother uh, re- uh, sort of fairly recently got a gaming computer, but he couldn't get into the keyboard and mouse, so he got mm. one of those Razer uh, keypad things, uh, which is sort of like a, a smaller like hand um, sized keyboard to oh, okay. play games with. And um, he was like, "Oh yeah, it's really good." And I've got I've got another couple of friends who use them. But because I'm so used to keyboard now, it, mm. I I would actually rather use a keyboard because that would require me to learn. Right? Oh, okay. So where are these buttons on this on right. this thing? And I can't be bothered to to make the change because I'm <laughs> I'm already I'm already used to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh it's just the, one one of the many problems of getting older and getting more easily bored. I think. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's been a trip uh, watching them just re <laughs> yeah. reinvent it. But yeah, other than that, not playing much. You know what? I just to uh, end off this whole thing, like I did buy a PS2 off of someone online on Craigslist. Nice. And it was a PS2 Mini. I haven't had one in, in years. Yeah. And, or the Slim, rather, when they came out with that Slim. And yeah. um, and so I've just been like rebuying older games. Like I bought, uh, uh, oh God, it's a Quantum Dream game. It is uh, not Fahrenheit. It is uh, heavy, not heavy rain. The one before that, it was like their first big game. I can't remember um, now. Yeah, so I, I know Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's um, it's a uh, see. It I think it was called Fahrenheit in the UK and other countries. In in the US, it was yeah. called something else. Uh, Indigo Prophecy. There we go. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. The one. yeah. And I'm playing it, and it's dope. And I just kind of forgot how weird and, and dumb awesome, it is. Yeah. But yeah, I like how yeah. that because like the writing is weird and and the conversations. But I like the there's so much detail in like what you can do and all the options. This is yeah. like a PS2 era game. 
Yeah, it's, it, I remember uh, quite vividly, actually, my sister playing it because she, she loves that game. In fact, she she likes all the newer games as well, like Heavy Rain and, mm-hmm. and all of that. Um, and I remember just being, I remember there's a part in it um, that just gets really creepy because it's quite a creepy game. Uh. Um, it's very sort of dark in, in a lot of ways. And I remember just sort of find, finding it really, really scary from a young age. So <laughs> um, I've never actually played it myself, but um, yeah, I'm familiar with um, sort of the general gist of it. Gotcha. I'm, I'm not very far in it either, but uh, uh, yeah, I want to get further in because I love that yeah. that style. And that one always like caught my eye because there was a demo disc years ago. I had the original Xbox when it came out and that game was on that demo disc. And it just like blew yeah. my mind how you could have all these options and you're timed on what you can do. And even when you're saying in a conversation, like the timer is going down, like what you can choose and that yeah. creates this path. And, and so I ended up how, loving, how does it, how does it feel playing it on, on the original PlayStation? It's not bad. It? You know, it's yeah. a, it's, it's kind of the, there's third person um, camera work and then it'll switch to like that same like Resident Evil style where it's in, yeah. it's stuck in the room and then you're moving around. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's funny how it's following how all the, all the newer games follow that same format where there's some kind of murder that you've done or you're participating yeah. in. Yeah. And then like, uh, there's an investigator. And so you'll swap between yeah. these characters. And even in that first one, you're swapping between the main guy who did the thing. And then the investigator who trying to catch that guy. And so you're investigating, looking for clues, but you're also like, uh, you know, in the shoes of that person. So it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, they follow that same kind of, whether it's, um, not, I'm not sure with beyond two souls, but I never played that one, but I know with uh, mm-hmm. Detroit, same thing where you're that investigator, you're the other people yeah. like revolting and then in yeah. heavy rain as well. But, yeah, they follow that same format. Yeah, it's quite it's it's, it's quite nice to do that sometimes. Is is to go back and play like uh, you know like a maybe like the first big game from yep. a company that you're familiar with their newer games because you do get to see like the, the sort of like their reverse evolution, um, right. which is which is quite cool because because there's some companies that you know I mean Infinity Ward's a great example where they loot that where after. Um, like Call of Duty 4, they lost all of their creative team to different teams. I think a lot of them went to Respawn. And, oh, okay. And then, and then future games from that company sort of lose that kind of identity. So you always know when you, you know, go back to an older game and you can still see sort of that same like style and identity. You always, that, that, that's sort of like, for me, always a sign that, you know, maybe they, they've always stayed with the same values and everything, which is always good. And, and they're, a, they're an independent studio still, aren't they? Which yeah. you know, is quite rare nowadays. So maybe that plays into it as well, that you know they're always like um, in charge of their own sort of destiny kind of thing. Right, right. Um, and they really... Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great throwback, Fahrenheit. I completely um, I forgot about that one. Check it out. It's on... There's plenty on eBay, like where you can... I found a disc for like, you know, six bucks. So it's not like yeah. uh, it's, you know, a collector's item. So... And then the yeah. one thing I need to eventually get is I want to play the original Half-Life. They put that on on PS2. Mm. And I never yeah. like sat down and played it. I've dabbled in with... I have it on Steam. Like I'll play, it, I'll play the first hour or two every once in a while. Yeah. But I want to finish it and they have it on PS2. So I think I want to yeah, yeah, play yeah. it that way. But it's like 30 bucks on yeah, eBay. Nice. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. That, sound, that sounds like one of those games that's sort of probably quite, you know, a collector's, uh, yeah. collector's thing. Yeah the, yeah, the reason I asked about um, where, how it played is, because I don't know whether you've tried, you know, you, like the PS2 classes you can get on PS4. So you've got like um, Max Payne. Oh, uh, sure. You can get like Bully and all of that. And I, I always find, um, even with the Jack and Daxter HD trilogy, I always find that... Um, it feels kind of like there's like a delay, like a delay to the input, like. Oh. And I don't know. Wh- I don't know whether that's just down to, you know, like movement being far more precise nowadays. So, for example, there's a there's a part in Max Payne where near the beginning where you're in like some weird dream state and you've got to like go across this really thin like walkway. I feel like I remember and if you that. Fall yeah. off, you die. Yeah, it's 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 like one of the big. Uh, parts, but it's really infuriating on PS4 because like if you if you move the analog stick slightly. He'll like play his movement animation, but it's so like it's not very precise. Uh. So he'll move quite a lot. So you can't even flick the stick. And I didn't know whether <laughs> that was sort of, that happened in the sort of porting part of it going from PS2 to PS4, or whether if you play it natively on PS2, you know, mm. it's fine. Because uh, I wasn't sure if it was just um, you know us getting you know used to these really precise movements now and and you know taking it for granted. That's um, true. That's interesting. Um, I didn't notice yeah. any weirdness, but. Uh... Um, yeah, it wasn't like, uh, I think the movement could, there, uh, there wasn't any need for me to be super precise where I would have maybe no, noticed yeah. that, but yeah, yeah. No, that sounds, uh, infuriating to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. the most narrow plank yeah. too. And you're trying to figure it out. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice, Callum. Well, we got some news stories, Callum. We can get into some stuff happened. Yep. Um, let's pull up. I should have this stuff ready, but I do not. Okay. So one of the first big ones was uh, the RE3 remake. We got some impressions that went live. This was on Tuesday morning. Um, and so I pulled just two blurbs from IGN and then get into, you know, what you think about it uh, so far, but uh, at least the what, how you're interpreting, interpreting the impressions that have come out. Uh, but IGN uh, has a quote here. In many ways, Resident Evil 3 feels like more of the more of the same, but when that same is the incredible Resident Evil 2 remake, it's hard to see that this is a negative. With the inclusion of Nemesis and a greater emphasis on scale and maneuverability, Resident Evil 3 feels fresh enough to stand on its own and take an imprint quick f- step for the series. GameSpot also said there's a greater emphasis on action compared to RE2 with more zombies populating areas. It never approaches horde level numbers, but the increase in the undead coming at you on all sides is enough to to feel overwhelming. Nemesis is intimidating and unpredictable, often quickly popping out and assaulting you from directions you least expect. Uh, yeah, did you read some of the different uh, impressions? What do you think so far, how people are taking it? Yeah, I've um, it mostly got sort of drip-fed t- through Twitter. I didn't I didn't realize at first, for some reason, I completely missed the the sort of new, the new stuff, but um, there was a page on Twitter, I can't remember what it's called now, it's uh, some reference to Barry from Resident Evil. I can't remember what it was now. Oh, okay. But, um, they were sharing lots of new footage of the game, and from that, I sort of delved deeper into it. Um, and yeah, I think it looks really good. Um, I think that I've seen some negative things, you know, saying oh, it's too actiony because there's, you know, they've got they've added in the dodge roll now, and there's like yeah. a little slow motion auto aim thing after you roll if you time it right. There's things like explosive barrels, um, more obviously more zombies, which which would mean a bigger emphasis on the on the shooting and, and sort right. of dispatching of them but i i think it's cool i think um it's quite uh it's really cool because it's almost repeating exactly what happened back on ps1 but now with the remakes which i, I think is quite quite interesting to see it unfold because you had resident evil 2 which was you know this really really um tight scary atmospheric game on ps1 and same with the ps4 version and then you had resident evil 3 which came out on ps1 um and you know you start off with a assault rifle and you know mm. all the all these different things and it was far more action orient orientated with the role and there was a lot more zombies than resident evil 2 so it seems like all of the changes that the resident evil 3 remake have are the exact same changes that the original had in the first place so it, it's good for me because uh, I want, I want to make sure that they, you know, they keep it, um, not necessarily exactly the same, but at least the same identity as the original. Um, and yeah, I think it look, I think it looks great. I think it looks really fun. Um, it looks like they've, you know, put in a bit more of the fun Capcom esque stuff. Um, it looks like there's a few, you know, there's, I, I saw quite a few colourful like shop fronts and like neon signs and things in mm. in some of the new footage, which looks quite, uh, quite fun. Um, and yeah, and I think Nemesis looks. He, he looks really good. I, I don't think he looks quite as scary as the original. I think it's a he's teeth, like I think are weird, right? Like the yeah, the teeth. yeah. And I think he's just like he's super tall. Like he's really mm. lanky and like and kind of like thin in a way, if that makes sense. Like yeah. his proportions. Whereas in the original and even the the movie as well, he's very like stocky. You know, he's he's tall, but he's not like over the top tall. He's just like a big you know right thing and, and got the traps um, with the weird like cords coming out of it or whatever the hell's yeah, going yeah, on yeah 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 and i uh, i think he looks great but yeah and i i think i think it looks really good I, I like obviously the dodge roll has to be in it otherwise you know it's a bit unfair having this big sprinting thing yeah. coming after you um yeah i think it'll be fun i think the shooting's great in the the original in resident evil 2 remake so um you know i, I don't see any problem with them adding a bit more in um, it just and it seems to me like they're building up to maybe doing a Resident Evil 4 remake, which I'd be very on board with. But I, I don't think that that would be able to come out as quick as maybe these two did. No, and I think it's good for them to kind of take their time and space these out because these are now, you know, they're reinvi- reinvigorating the franchise where you can count, mm. count on these like making money and, and people waiting for yeah. it. Do you think they go yeah. Resident Evil 4 or there's also Code Veronica? I think a lot of people forget about that. Yeah, I forget about that. I remember yeah. playing that on Dreamcast for so that was like my yeah. first time I played it, but. Do you think they kind of delve yeah. some of the outside, you know, Resident Evil games? Yeah, maybe. I think um, with I think it's quite unique with Resident Evil two and three, and probably Code Veronica as well, because they're they're in the same vein. I think that because Resident Evil two only came out what last 
January was it? January twenty nineteen. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, so there's not a lot of time between between the tiers. What a year and uh, three months or, mm-hmm. or so, and that's obviously release and so not even development. Um, and but I th- I feel like with Mister X's inclusion in the Resident Evil Two remake, because he was barely even featured in the original. He only showed up in the in the second scenario in the original. Um, oh, okay. I think that it was pretty clear that they made him such a big part of the remake because then that gave them the building blocks for Nemesis early on. Gotcha. Um, so, and if you look at the two games, they don't look like they're, you know, it doesn't look like Resident Evil 3 has made any graphical improvements, not that it needed to because that engine's brilliant. Right, um, yeah. But it looks like it's just minor tweaks here and there. Um, and I think Code Veronica X would be more of the same. So maybe it'd make sense to, you know, maybe another year on or another year and a half on to have a Code Veronica X remake because like you said that game did not get the attention it it deserved um I'm not the biggest fan of Code Veronica X I think it does have some problems and I know that when it first came out people were really sick of the tank controls and the camera angles which is why they went to the over the shoulder yeah. more action thing um so yeah it would be nice to to see that get some love and obviously it'd flesh out Claire a bit more um so yeah it, it, it yeah i don't know i i i mean it's hard for me cuz i'd love to see resident evil 4 but um i think that would require a big big um like development cycle compared to these games um yeah just just due to its sheer size um even the i mean the ps2 version is so so much longer than than any of the others um but but i mean it's it's like you said recently you said that you played it for the first time and you couldn't get into it because of you know it hadn't aged well control wise and so i mean and and when that starts to happen that's when you know it's a good time for a remake to come out no exactly yeah and uh i think maybe i could have gone over gotten over my own hurdles and just you know figured it out just same thing with like dreams we were talking about like i could just got used to the controls and experience the game but me being how I am, I was like, oh, I'll just wait for when they eventually make yeah. this more, yeah. you know, of an easier yeah. ride. But um, yeah. I do think to go back to that RE3 remake, um, when I see Nemesis, uh, the fact that he's like super fast, it's, it's, I already thought Mr. X was terrifying. So like, I'm mm. kind of trying to get into the mode where I can play this remake because I don't like this, that, this idea of this yeah. guy chasing <laughs> me the entire time. And it seems like with Resident Evil yeah. 3, was he able to chase you everywhere? Like, was he your every, did you get a break from him in that in that original game? Yeah, so so in the original, it did it did get to the point where it was um, quite infuriating. Sorry, my little brother just come in. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, it did get to the point where it was quite infuriating, but um, it it was scripted. So you okay. know there, there were certain moments where he would turn up, but if you didn't sort of because what what would happen is each time he'd turn up, you'd have the opportunity to kill him or down him. Oh and right, he would drop something. Um, and if you didn't do that, then he'd be able to chase you for much longer portions gotcha. of the game. Um, so I, I don't know how they're going to do it with, with this one. Um, but yeah, he was a real pain in the ass in the original. So, And in, in, to the point where I know a lot of people didn't actually enjoy the game because of him, because it just got to the point where it, it was, he was just frustrating. Yeah. Um, but no, I think, I, think it, I think he definitely could maybe follow you throughout throughout big large portions of the game i think that'd be interesting and really horrifying at the same time yeah i do remember them saying with this remake that they've changed that format because yeah you could either fight or run like that was an option they yeah. time you interact with them and i think yeah. they got rid of that and now it's just up to you to decide yeah. like in real time yeah um yeah. i always found that ner- and that's the point but i always found that nerve-wracking in the re2 remake dealing mm. with uh, mr x and I just, I liked having to just be able to deal with, there's already enough going on with the zombies and fucking monsters yeah. and you have Mr. Yeah. X. So I'm hoping they balance that, at least for me, where I can like just be, you know, just have a fun time still playing it, even though this guy's chasing me the whole time. Although with Mr. X, yeah. eventually you get used to him and you know like, okay, he yeah, can't come into exactly, the safe yeah. room. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I think that's going to be a big um, change is even though they are adding in these, you know, these these new mechanics that will let you roll and, uh, you know, maybe hold your own a bit better. Mm. Um, you know, Nemesis is going to be a completely different like kettle of fish because, like, like you said, after a while, Mister X becomes quite easy to deal with. Yeah. Um, he's, you know, he just walks around and um, just punches you. Whereas Nemesis is going to be able to sprint. He's going to have obviously his tentacle where he'll be able to, you know, get you from range. He's going to have all his different weapons, oh, his rifle, rocket yeah. launcher, and um, so it's going to be 
it's I'm I'm sure it's going to be frustrating as hell, but um, I I can't wait for it. Nemesis is one of my favourite sort of all time horror characters, um, and yeah, I I I I can't imagine it's going to be anything other than uh, awfully scary. Yeah, <laughs> which I'm on board. I can't wait. Uh, they yeah. did uh, to to jump on that too. Capcom tweeted that there's a demo on the way, so they tweeted it was written in yeah. the stars. Uh, a Resident Evil 3 demo is on the way. We'll have more details in the near future. Uh, we, if we were to like imagine, when do you think this possible demo could come out? So the game comes out April 3rd. Um, yeah. So what we're already like, I don't know, a month you know, away. Yeah. Basically, we're getting towards the end of February, and so we got March and then yeah. April. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Hopefully hopefully pretty soon. I'd, I'd re- I'm really interested to try it out. Um, I'm hoping they do like a similar thing to Resident Evil 2 where they had like a, um, a slightly different version of of a portion of the game which is timed um right i I think that was quite a good way to do it but yeah i like you said i'm very apprehensive to play it because nemesis is like it like my fear of him is like instilled in me from when i was a child i imagine um i can't i I, i'm not sure how i'm gonna react (laughs) but um but yeah i'm really excited hopefully the demo will be very soon yeah, and I, I can't wait to play that demo too. Yeah. Uh, to take a slight uh, tangent, but still Resident Evil related, we never really talked about your feelings on the movies. Did you, being a Resident Evil fan, what are your thoughts yeah. on? I loved the first one when it came out. I was a huge nerd mm-hmm. for that. That's also where I fell in love yeah. with Mila Jovovich, and I was like, oh, I got to marry her. Yeah. Where do I find her? And yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like 13 <laughs> at the time. But um, yeah. And then it goes off the rails. But what? how did you like those movies? Um, yeah, I liked them. I was very young when 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 they came out. Uh, so again, they they frightened me when I was little. But um, yeah, I, I really liked them. Um, I really liked um, Apocalypse, the second one, mostly mm. because Nemesis was in it. And I think they did Nemesis so well as well uh, in in the movie. And I liked the third one as well. Um, and then after that, it just got a bit weird. Um, after that, they all felt like sort of music videos. I thought, yeah, um, yeah, like lots of slow mo, lots of weird style, stylish stuff, and um, yeah. So I, I think the 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 very last two. So I don't even know how many there are now, but yeah, like the last two, something. the last two, I couldn't even sit through. Mm. Um, which is is hard for me to find a film that I, like that. But yeah, the first three, I think, are respectable films. Um, and I hear that aren't they making a like a Netflix series or something? You know, uh, like I think you're reboot. right. There's apparently some kind of Netflix thing. I know they're trying to reboot the actual movies as well, like yeah. just a, a complete reboot. Uh, I would yeah. like them to go. So my criticism was always uh, I like that first one because it seemed a bit more there was action in it for sure, but it was a bit more trying mm-hmm. to scare you. And they kind of yeah. just forgot yeah. about that as they kept going. Yeah. It was way more actiony, and, and Jill's just like. She's in the Matrix somehow. She's doing all these crazy stuff. Yeah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah. I like. I would like them to go back to that survival horror idea where it's just more on the scary side and mm-hmm. delve into that and just play with those emotions rather than you know crazy uh, CG stuff happening. Um, but yeah. um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that happens. But yeah, yeah. I I I just think it's such a good property to to explore because yep. I think it has such good characters already. It has a really cool setting um and it's really like goofy like in a in a in a good like a japanese kind of way right. and i think that the animated films i've only seen the first one oh is that phone again <laughs> it's my narcos phone yeah. um and uh the uh what was i saying yeah the, the, i've only seen the first animated film but i think that that like really understands what it's what it's sort of making it, it understands the property it understands its strengths and what people like about it mm. um so i think yeah i mean either a really serious scary reimagining would be good but i'd also love like a nice cheesy but in the right ways uh sort of reimagining of it as well because yeah like i said those characters are just great i mean chris and leon are just such fun such fun yeah uh, sort of uh, classic Japanese American uh, sort of uh, characters, which I think are always good fun to watch. What's the deal with? Is it the RE3 re- remake has a character named like Johnny Sandwich? Is that the is that a reality? What's the deal with the sandwich thing? <laughs> uh, the only thing to do with sandwiches from Resident Evil I know is uh, in the original Resident Evil One, so the the PS1 version. Um, it has like really awful dialogue oh, and like, okay. really cringy cutscenes and things. Um, and there's a there's a room uh, in it where when you're playing as Jill, um, where you uh, I can't remember exactly what happens, but you 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 basically set off a trap and this like ceiling starts coming down. Oh yeah uh, yeah okay. And uh, and you get saved by one of the sort of secondary characters called Barry, and he says something like 
you were almost a Jill sandwich yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, they take they took it out of the remake as well, which they, they he says something like a bit more normal in the remake. It's a shame, but mm. yeah, that's like a really um, famous line from from the series. So it might it might be like they might have like created a character named after that. Or something, I thought I remember hearing sure. something about or just some like some yeah. kind of weird translation where their last name is just like a just rake or yeah. like you know bucket or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. No, there might be something like that to be honest. <laughs> gotcha. Well, yeah, we don't have to wait too much longer for at least a demo of RE3, so we'll see how that goes. Mm, yeah. But cannot wait. Uh, Cal, this next article is more, you know, imagination or just kind of reading into the lines here, but it's a, another patent from Sony. Uh, PS5, yep. new patent for DualShock that senses sweat slash heartbeat. Uh, so this is from Games Radar, Liam Croft. I'll just go into a little blurb here for a little bit. Uh, another patent has been filed by Sony, which could potentially hint at a new feature or at new features coming our way as part of the next generation. This time around, focus on the PlayStation 5's controller. Biofeedback could be used to modify game experiences through sensors that would track your heart rate and sweat secretion. Or oh, this sounds super gross. Reported by Respawn First, sensors found within the two grips of the controller could adjust a user's, user's experience based on how quickly their heart is beating and how much sweat their hands are producing at one time. Presum- presumably, this would lead to a game's difficulty being lowered should the player allow for it. Um, yeah, Callum, what do you think? This is a, a patent, first of all, like, and, and they can decide to use this or not. So oftentimes, they don't. Mm-hmm. But w- what are your thoughts on this idea of being in you know, a DualShock? Are you interested in that, or is it kind of like... You know, fluff. Does it need to be there? Mm. Yeah, I th- I think it was um when, when I first sort of read the the biofeedback thing, I wasn't really sure what what it could be used for. I think the only thing I I could have uh, or I would have thought would be, I mean, you see sometimes like streamers and YouTubers track their heart rate when they're playing horror games, mm. but that's more for like a just a fun sort of thing. But then when I saw about the like an adaptive difficulty thing, um, I think that that could work, but I. Th- the problem with that is it would require a lot of research, I think, if it's going to be used like across the board. Oh, sure. Uh, a lot of research as to sort of like psychologically, like when would be the best time to do it and uh, and how, how much. I think that would require a lot of work from designers. Um, but I mean, it, it does work. I mean, Resident Evil, going back to Resident Evil, Resident Evil 4 famously has had a secret adaptive difficulty in it which it didn't it never said about but it was sort of re- realized afterwards that it did where if you continuously keep dying on the same bit they will reduce the difficulty like maybe make make things better it's kind of like dungeons and dragons where if you know if you're fighting like really hard enemies that and and you and the dungeon master realizes it might be a little bit too difficult he may he might fudge a roll or or whatever gotcha. it's kind of like that kind of thing um and that was done like masterfully um for resident evil 4 because nobody knew it it was even in it um so it, it, i mean it, it definitely works adaptive difficulty and i think that that could work but you know i i don't know personally how much you know how sweaty your hands are or how quickly your heart is beating relates to maybe whether you're struggling with something that needs to be lowered because i know sometimes i'll play a game and my hands are just for no reason sweating and or (laughs) you know or maybe maybe like you've just had your dinner and you've like ran upstairs back to your playstation now your heart's beating and you got chicken Um, grease or something on your hands and that yeah exactly yeah so yeah so i I don't know it i like it i think adaptive difficulty is brilliant but i think there's other ways to monitor that i think um you know just simply knowing the players died is right plenty to know or damage taken or something yeah, and I mean, you've got it in quite a lot of games. I mean, I know the old God of Wars used to do it, and where if you're on a certain difficulty, if you keep dying, it will say, would you like to reduce the difficulty? You know, that gotcha. classic, like, um, sort of test your manhood right. kind of thing. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I think I think adaptive difficulty is, is, is a really good thing, and I think it should definitely be looked at and used more so like it was in Resident Evil 4. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about this. Um, you're right where I think it would require a lot of research on the devs and to pair this tech with, okay, where is the right time to like, you know, reduce the difficulty, yeah. ramp it up. Um, so in, yeah. in theory, I like the idea, but I think its application would be harder to do. But it seems like yeah. it would lend itself better for horror games or, uh, you know, uh, games where they're relying on the player to monitor when they are when they feel at ease to like ramp it up, yeah. you know, and then when they feel yeah. confident, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, but yeah. I just don't know. It, uh, I, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. I think you that you make a good point. Actually, I think in a horror game, it, it could probably be used quite well to, because I mean, you've got games like, for example, like Dead Space, where sometimes you'd have so many jump scares one after the other, you just sort of like you just get used to it. Right. So maybe it, it would be quite a good way for horror game designers to 
you know make sure that they're maintaining a good atmosphere a good ambience and and it could also be used to make horror experiences different for each person because you might have somebody who's not necessarily scared by games very often so yep. they might have an entirely different experience to somebody who you know gets scared really easily um which is always it's always good to have you know dynamic playthroughs that that, that change especially when it comes to having a conversation about a game right. and everyone's experience is different it always it always adds to the to the interest really yeah no it's interesting we'll see if they implement something like this i guess if it came down to uh this tech being making the controller more expensive i feel like we could probably leave it out but if it's something they could easily mm-hmm. throw in i know i've seen um you know there's fitbit watches there is even like treadmills where they have a certain material where you hold on to it and it will track your heartbeat so i think that tech yeah. is potentially cheap enough small enough where you can throw it into a controller it's not a big deal it's not going to raise the price yeah. of the dual shock but no yeah yeah we'll see how that goes callum um now that's really it for the big news stories I, I pulled up for this week. Um, there was a little a blurb on the PlayStation Plus game. So the for March 2020, it's Shadow of the Colossus and mm-hmm. uh, Sonic Forces. Um, did you ever play Shadow of the Colossus or the remake that came out recently? Uh, I actually haven't. It's one. It's one of those big games that I've always wanted to play, but it, it, it's just always escaped me. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, I'll definitely be given that a go probably in about five years time when i've got time to play it there you go. um but <laughs> but um but no yeah I, i'm i think that's a good good lineup um well i say i i really don't i don't like sonic uh as a mm. series really so you weren't waiting in line um, for the new movie when it came out no i wasn't <laughs> I, I i remember i really enjoyed sonic heroes which i played on gamecube um but other than that I, i've just never understood sonic and i've heard sonic forces even for fans of sonic isn't isn't a great one either um, but, but what's interesting to me is, you know, I, I thought that they would be because they they've taken away PS3 games and Vita games from the plus right. drop now. Mm-hmm. Um, but they added a VR game as like a third option last month. So I thought that would be like the new thing, but clearly not. Yeah, that's true. It's just these two these two uh, standard, yeah. you know, console games. Um, I wonder because yeah. last year or last month, rather, I think it was that uh, Echo Force or whatever. There was like a VR shooter. Yeah. Um, so maybe they're going yeah. every other month. I'm not sure, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But you definitely have to check out Shadow of the Colossus. That remake is is really dope. Um, I think uh, yeah. was it last year, the year before that, when it came out, and uh, that was the first time I actually finished that game, and it's it's man, yeah. it's fucking good. It's really really good. Yeah, I've I've heard I've heard nothing but you know near perfect things about it. So um, that's definitely a good reason to give it a go. Then also Sonic Forces, man, even better than Shadow. No, <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> How that works. Uh, I, I grew up, I was a uh, Sega kid where I had a Genesis. I had a, so Sonic for sure was day one where I played that and loved it. Uh, I had a Dreamcast yeah. and Sonic Adventure always blew my mind because you're just zipping so fast and, and yeah. the graphics were crazy. Um, but, you know, yeah. and it, argue, arguably those games were also bad. And so, and, but they definitely like took a dive after that where every release was just Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. I, I mean, I appreciate, um, you know, like that, what, what would count as a good sonic game right <laughs> um and, and and i also see which ones are just like objectively bad um like i think was it just, was it the one just called sonic the hedgehog it came out like oh that was yeah it's something. infamous where it was just like super yeah. rushed out of the door and <laughs> yeah. had all these bugs and yeah it yeah. was just uh, a shit show but yeah 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 no I, I really liked sonic heroes i remember being really enamored with that game um but or sonic yeah, mania I, did I you just... play that uh, no, I haven't. I, to be honest, that the last Sonic game I I ever played was uh, probably Sonic Heroes, gotcha. um, which which would have been, I mean, way back probably two thousand and four. Yeah, somewhere around uh, there. Probably when I played that, and um, I, I I still to this day I love that game. I think it's just, or I think it's such a cool, like the way it's done with the different character, like parties of characters yeah. with different their own campaigns. I, I was really, I really really like that game, but um, I've just never been a fan of like because you're always going really really fast and then there'll always be like an inevitable obstacle that you pretty much like there's no way you can know it's even coming and yeah. it's just it's just that, that i don't know it just doesn't it just doesn't gel with me personally but but yeah i mean it's same with like metal gear solid i can i don't like the metal gear solid games very much but i can appreciate you know why people do like them they're just not right you know sonic sonic's just not for me unfortunately i think you're right to put sonic on the same tier as metal gear solid i think they're you're oh yeah yeah i definitely there. didn't mean to do that but yeah. <laughs> they're historically the same quality of no yeah um, 
already come. Well, one's got one's got a movie and one doesn't. Although I suppose Metal Gear Solid. Is There's movies, like, yeah. Every release, yeah. it's like <laughs> ten hours of fucking cutscenes. But yeah. Um, well, Callum, before we end off, we have a conversation piece I want to get into really quickly. Just your thoughts on. So this is in the Xbox world, but this is when we're comparing them both because it's next gen stuff coming out. Um, but Xbox over the week. The Phil Spencer uh, wrote a blog post. He's talking about the confirming the power. So 12 teraflops, you know, whatever the fuck a teraflop is, there's 12 of them. And uh, talk about the power for Xbox. But also one thing I thought was pretty interesting was smart delivery. So it's the ability to buy one Xbox game and it works on whether you have the One S now, if you have the One X or the Series X, that same co- that same copy rather will work across all these different platforms that like creating like an ecosystem. On top of that, CD, CD Projekt Red, who are doing Cyberpunk, they tweeted out, we're going to support this feature, not day one, you know, whenever Xbox uh, opens the gate where you can use this, if you buy uh, Cyberpunk, is going to work across all the different Xboxes, whatever you have. Um, so, and it's a great idea, great for consumers. How do you imagine this affects Sony? Do you think they already have their own feature? Will that be a standard or is that a, like a divide that will create between them? Well, I think Sony have already been fairly vocal about getting backwards compatibility across i think they've they've all but confirmed it will be backwards with ps4 i, I think yeah, i think you're right yeah um uh but the main thing that people want is mostly ps3 backwards compatibility because of that architecture and how it it's so i mean i, I know playstation now is a thing but i know also know that streaming's not really yeah the greatest thing to experience games with at the moment but um, a lot of PS3 games just feel stranded uh, on the hardware, and I think that's why people are crying out for some backwards compatibility there. Um, but yeah, I think it definitely... I mean, I think the heat was already put on them when Xbox started allowing backwards compatibility with 360 games. Um, so I think this doesn't necessarily put any more heat on them. I think it was pretty much a given that this kind of thing was going to happen with Xbox. Um, but yeah, I think it, the, only, the only thing that that stands out is... So Cyberpunk will support it as soon as it's available, which means yeah. it doesn't sound like it's something that's going to work straight out of the box uh, or right. as soon as as soon as it's released. So, um, and, and uh, so does this mean that, you know, if you had a disc of an original Xbox game, say, would the disc work or would you have to buy it digitally? This or... is where it gets tricky because they haven't gone into detail on this, but potentially if you do have your Xbox, say you have the Xbox One S and you buy the next one, yeah. you have that same disc that worked yeah. on your One S, there's potentially some kind mm. of download that needs to happen for all the upgraded textures and whatnot, or yeah. everything yeah. is on the disc and you unlock it yeah. when you put it into different consoles. I'm not sure. They haven't gone yeah. into detail, but that's another yeah. can and, of worms. And does this include like original, like PS2, Xbox sort of games does it include 360 games no i think they're just... focusing on like next gen so if you buy a game now then it, it mm-hmm. will work on like it's it's next gen equivalent will unlock so you'll have that ability to play yeah. the next gen okay. version of that game is what they're yeah. they're they're saying well the the there's there's actually something that i remember listening to a conversation about this kind of thing before and i remember when the playstation 4 came out that th- th- this already happened with with that so i remember I had Battlefield 4 on PlayStation 3. Uh, and when you bought it, because that was around the time the PlayStation 4 was coming out as well. And if you bought it on PS3, you would get a code with it that you could then get the game on PS4 as well. Gotcha. Um, so it, it did it did happen with the PS3 to PS4 in certain areas. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. It's all just very confusing because especially with the naming convention. I mean, you've got the Xbox One, and then you've got what was the Xbox One, like the original Xbox. Yeah. And, I never and liked you've got that the Xbox One X and the Series X, and it's, it's all just very confusing. So, I mean, you'd hope that both consoles will be able to play any game on, on their entire sort of platform history because, you know, we're getting to that. We're getting to the, to, to you know, there's em- emulators exist on computers, right. and, you know, PlayStation now manages to emulate in some way playstation 3 uh hardware um so yeah i mean it's just one of those things that you're just you're just hoping that it's just going to be on both sides but yeah i mean if if sony do come out and they don't have something like this or they don't it's not as robust as this then yeah it's going to really hurt them um and i think it could be a repeat of the whole drm thing of xbox one so you'd you'd hope that they're not going to um make the same mistake as as microsoft did yeah yeah and i wonder uh, it's it's interesting because uh 
is there a high demand and there might be for making sure that when you get that next generation console that your games work on it or vice versa i also kind mm-hmm. of my mind splits where i can see that argument and that's probably the best one to have but at the same time when you're buying the new thing it's like well i want you know this new experience so why am i worried about mm-hmm. this older console yeah. working with that one yeah. at the same time and the reality is a lot of people will trade and i'm in that same boat they'll trade in their mm-hmm. console for that new thing sure. so it's like you don't want to yeah. also lose that that catalog of games I just wonder going forward how important it is for gamers to still have that ability when also you could like you could stream stuff now as far as games go like so I wonder I think the future is getting a bit weirder where maybe we're not going to rely as much as on that backwards compatibility but Xbox mm-hmm. is doubling down where that is a that's a future with them you know that's a reality with them so I don't know yeah. it's up in the air for me but yeah it's it is a hard one especially when when you know both both companies seem to talk about about something and then it goes into the filter system of social media and everything gets twisted and so i i think it's hard to hard to really know what's happening until we have these things in our hands right. or until we see we see them in the in the flesh or, or being announced or whatever um so yeah i think it's it's yeah it's just getting like like you said it's just all up in the air now um but i think yeah i think you're right i think there is definitely a conversation to be had about you know d- if you're buying a new console do you really need to worry about playing games on you know previous generations or even two or three generations prior um which i think is a fair it's a fair argument to to make but like you said also you've got people who you know won't be able to afford these things cuz i'm sure they're going to they're not going to be cheap right uh, without without trading in their 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 old their old hardware so it's a tough one um but but yeah i mean you'd imagine in today's climate that both have got to be backwards compatible surely um, yeah i think so xbox anyway, so. xbox i'm 100 percent confident will because they've already pretty much done it with their current gen uh consoles now right sony i'm like 99 percent sure they will do it because i just can't imagine that they would be stupid enough not to do it no with, with yeah i would agree with that i think they're learning stuff. from that that horrible, yeah. you know, fumble with like PS3 and, and choosing not to support backwards compatibility or just not being as consumer friendly as they were with that launch. So I think they're really trying to, yeah. you know, uh, keep that momentum going with PS4 because they they control yeah. the or they've won the race so far. So they're still in the lead. They want to keep that yeah. leeway. And yeah, and, and I have no idea what teraflops are at all. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds just like a made up word. And and I think I think it's kind of um, weird to try and like measure power when it comes to a console because they're always so because they're what like single purpose built right they're they're so optimized that the power normally isn't even measurable because if you were to measure a ps3 or a ps4's power compared to the actual components inside it they wouldn't be able to do the things that they do they wouldn't be able to run the games that they do so all i think all you need to know when there's a new console coming out is that it's going to run games amazingly well and it's going to they're going to look great and if you've got thousands of pounds or dollars to spend on a PC, then yeah, it's going to look better. But that's not what that's not what these are for. Right. So um, yeah, yeah. With the teraflops, I know they've offered some kind of uh, measurability where the Xbox One X was around six or eight teraflops, and yeah. then this is twelve, so it's almost double. So I guess potentially double yeah. the power, but still, it depends on the devs to even you know to optimize everything yeah. to use it. So we'll see how that exactly, goes. yeah. Yeah, well, it's like you got games like Lair, one of the PS3 release games that, you know, when they were working with the, when they were sort of like pre-deving it, and they were like, oh yeah, the PS3 is so powerful, we're gonna we're gonna be able to do all this, and then they got the actual PS3 dev kits, and they were like, this is a nightmare to work yeah. on. Yeah. Um. So it all it all, I mean, yeah, it might it might have this like quantifiable, you know, teraflop thing that you can measure it by with previous uh, versions, but like you said it's all down to how these things are engineered how well they work with the developers and um and yeah yeah it's gonna be but i'm sure they'll be they'll both be they'll both be great yeah and that's that's a also take a side note that's a conversation i I want more people to jump into or like i want to see some kind of documentary in the future on the cell chip Mm. i feel like there's Mm. they sony took such a big swing with that tech and i'm not sure if that was you know proprietary sony stuff or what the deal was why they made that decision but it seemed like there yeah. was if you could make it work which devs did there was so much power in that cell chip uh say yeah. look at games like the last of us you know with naughty dog working with it so i wonder if 
if you could look go back now and just like just break down the cell chip and figure out hey there there was a yeah. lot of potential here it was just yeah it was hard to work with yeah. but maybe there yeah. was like a, there's an alternate reality where sony kept going that direction and it's just like unlock something yeah. crazy i don't know but i would learn learn to know yeah. more about what their decision was yeah i think i think the ps3 is super interesting because it 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 sort of had like a really it was kind of like an underdog movie tale like where you know the, i mean i had the ps3 on the day it came out um and but but i remember at the time all my school friends being on xbox and whatever and um and obviously yeah it bombed re- really hard because of the price and mm-hmm. just because of a lot of the really i mean resistance and motorstorm were great games but a lot of the other release games were marred in con- controversy over the over the system sort of architecture and but then when it came to the sort of end of the generation playstation 3 was on top right. because you know that that sony were like right we need to invest all this money into our first party studios and into talent and into creatives which is what xbox seem to be doing now as well um so it is it's a very interesting story the, the story of the ps3 because it, it does go from you know being absolutely obliterated by the 360 to coming back and and actually ended out on top at the end of the generation. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think I think you're right. I think a documentary just on that whole thing would be would be really interesting. Yep, I agree. Callum, uh, we'll end it on the day and PlayStation segment. So this one was uh, pretty neat. So it's just kind of cool to go back down memory lane. This is 11 years ago. Uh, Killzone 2 launched, and so when I think of Killzone 2, I always think of that uh, E3 trailer, um, the CG trailer, or what was you know were not not advertised as CG. It was advertised as in game, which is, that's what, you know, made yep. everyone's head explode, but it, it was eventually released as, I'm pretty sure they eventually confirmed it was target footage. That's what they're trying to get it to look mm-hmm. like. And yep. I feel like they eventually yep. pulled it off. Like the, as far as, as far as getting close to that CG trailer, which was almost impossible, they got pretty damn close mm-hmm. with Killzone 2 Cause that tech looked yeah. really amazing. Oh yeah. It's, 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 it, I remember vividly Killzone 2. I just being completely blown away by how it looks. I mean, they were quite, they were quite um, smart in how they did it because everything was so dark and gritty. So it was a bit, probably a bit easier to sort of give, the, give off the illusion that everything looked so real. Right. But yeah, I remember those that, that, that game looking unbelievable. But yeah, I think you're right. I think the CG trailer was, I mean, you see it from Ubisoft a lot where, you know, they've got this ultra polished vertical slice of a game that they're showing. Yep. And then obviously when the game comes out, the whole game, they don't have the time to spend that much time polishing the entire thing. There's the Watch yeah, Dogs I think it's, uh, I, uh, whole fiasco yeah watchdogs yeah um and yeah i think it, there's a lot of mocap if I, I mean i haven't seen this trailer in years but from what i remember there's a lot of like mocap animating and you know the kind of things that is are, is too specific to to have in game yeah let's check it out if you're ready to go we can queue up this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. video here cool so this is the i didn't uh, so i didn't watch this like when it came out at e3 i didn't watch this e3 live but this is apparently shown off mm. at e3 and this was right before the PS3. So this is also showing off, hey, this is the insane power we can imagine yeah. with the PS3. Um, and this was what, like four years before Killzone 2 came out? Uh, good question. Uh, was it Killzone like 2007, 2009? Okay. I think I could be wrong. Yeah, 2009 gotcha. Killzone 2. Yeah. Yeah. It does. I mean, even now, I mean, it looks. I mean, it, there's certain sort. Of, I think everything looks a bit smooth, doesn't it? Like right, like too smooth. Sort of details, yeah. But yeah. Also, this was oh, coming yeah, off of Killzone One being a franchise that like wasn't known for this. It was kind of like this weirder shooter, and they completely yeah. like almost reinvigorated it by releasing this this trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well. Yeah. I mean, I remember because I, I liked Killzone One when it came out and. So I remember Killzone One was set on Earth, and then this one was all set on Helgen, wasn't it? The, the alien, oh right, or yeah, the, the the planet of the the bad guys, which was um, where it got a bit more gritty and yeah, this uh, yeah, this looks this looks like a Ubisoft um, E3 yeah. <laughs> demo. <laughs> and the way your your gun really floats around and kind of like yeah, yeah, I think I think to be honest, I think if a game played like this, it made me feel a bit sick. Yeah. I love the the Hellgast. I want to say that's what they're called. The like the characters, anyways. They're a really cool, iconic looking bad dude. Oh yeah, yeah. They they like they they remind me a lot of like um, you know, like you got like Wolfenstein where they it's almost as they like when the Nazi if the Nazis won the war. Oh sure. Sort of came to like a more. They remind me of like a a very like Nazi 
sort of kind of um, faction. Yep. Or almost like the Combine in like Half-Life 2, those soldier guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good trailer. It's very, and this is a product of that era, but it's very gray. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think that's how they were able to make it look so good um, because everything's so sort of hidden um, beneath this sort of like grit and dirt and 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 I mean I I think because go because obviously Hellgast is a very the, the Hellgast are a very dark dreary you know a dark and dreary race so I think the the planet itself I remember it just always be it, it's almost like um you know like when you get like the modern warfare kind of um Afghanistan kind of oh sure environments yep. it's all brown it's like that and but like... everything's like black and yeah. Um, great games. I, I love. I love the Killzone series. I think um, really, really sort of underrated uh, games, um, and and they've always had really good multiplayer as well. Which yeah, again, they've been really well known for that. Yeah. Under the radar. Yeah, I would love, and I yeah. imagine it's because of it being stuck with the cell chip stuff. But like some kind of HD remake bringing people back into the Killzone franchise. Mm. I mean, I feel like yeah. uh, is a Shadowfall for PS4. That one was really dope. You mm. know, reinvigoration of the yeah. series. But uh, yeah. it'd be cool to go back to those first two or those those second two rather than yeah. two and three. Uh, yeah, I think I think because my my favorite kill zone was uh, three, I think, which is quite an un- I think it's quite an unpopular opinion. Mm. Um, but like objectively, I can I can see that Shadow Four is probably the best the best kill zone game in terms of like how it was made and you know it, it's because a lot of people don't like kill zone because of how gray and a lot of people think it's quite boring and, and everything, but yeah, Shadowfall was, was so good. It had such a good setting as well. You know how, uh, if I remember, uh, right, it's, they've, they've got like a big wall or something yeah. that separates. Cause it's about the hell gas now living on earth or something. Oh, you're like, right. Like, yep. Yep. Agreed peace or something. Yep. It's just such a really cool, like political, um, sort of setting, uh, which I do think the others, the others were just really like American, like, you know, war, sure. you know, like Western war, war stories um but yeah Sh- shadow Fall is really a game such a good um introduction to the ps4 as well do you think we see a, a, a visit back to uh, that whole franchise or with gorilla do they just focus on horizon being their new money maker i th- i think i think we'll definitely see another kill zone game um i think yeah because I, th- I think the gorilla have been i i know that there was some talk about them employing for a multiplayer game a multiplayer shooter uh. Um, so I don't know whether it's going to go like multiplayer only or, or I mean, you'd imagine that if they're doing, if they are working on a shooter, it would have to be kill zone. Um, right. Just cause it, ha- it packs that, that punch straight away. Doesn't it? Um, Especially if you can launch with the PS five yeah. with a shooter. Cause they always, they never really yeah. had a killer app shooter in, but kill zone right. was the closest thing they had to that. Yeah. Yeah. PlayStation have never had, especially a multiplayer shooter as well. And you've got a like halo infinite right. coming for, for Xbox's side, which is, I'm sure is going to be brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they, they, they really need to get, uh, a, a shooter, a multiplayer shooter sort of sorted, um, just to sort of compete on that side. And I mean, you've got last of us two's, uh, multiplayer segment coming as well, but again, that's not really going to compete with the, the multiplayer shooters. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, and another thing as well, I mentioned, I meant to mention is with Fortnite, it's going to be interesting to see how that transitions to PlayStation five as well. Cause True. you know, that that's such like a a titan in 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 games even still i mean i don't think i've ever seen a game that's ran this long and you know had this much like real estate of of like the gaming like world yep. for this long um so it'll be really interesting to see how that will transition to ps5 because you know people are going to want the new shiny games um and even if fortnite which i'm sure it will will release on ps5 you know people will probably be like oh no that's that's old gen that's last gen that is um so it'll be interesting to see see that kind of transition as well you're right then they're gonna have to make an announcement soon that's what's so weird is that like in xbox is right on schedule with their announcements with keeping staying relevant sony's saying yeah. nothing but you know that's that's yeah. whatever that's its own thing but as yeah. these months tick by this is a time to now start getting people on board because it's it's all a matter of like uh making sure consumers know that this thing is coming that their games work yeah. or to expect this cool new yeah. game so when Epic says, "Hey, yeah. you know what? Yeah, we or re- release a trailer. Here's what Fortnite's going to look day one on these new next gen systems." We need to see that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And really, I guess the last goalpost is E3. 
E3 is where, where really yeah. we start seeing these huge announcements. It just seems weird in this day and age because all these all these different companies just release stuff when they want. But I think E3 is yeah. the last kind of goal. I think I think even when people pull out of E3, like your Sony have pulled out and a few other companies are starting to follow suit yeah. now, I think it's still a, ta- a period of the year, you know, that, that early summer getting to midsummer, you know, around end of April, May, June time. I think that's still a great time to start announcing stuff, you know, because everyone's in a good mood, everyone's sort of, you know, starting to get into the summer. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think that will still be a great time to to get everything out there. I mean, I'm sure I'm, the, the, the PlayStation announcement has to be imminent, like oh, yeah. literally any time now. But um, yeah, like you said, like big announcements around E3. I don't even, I, I don't think companies pulling out of E3 is going to affect that still being a great time for, for companies to announce things. But but what wor- what worries me about PlayStation is they keep coming out on record saying that they still they don't expect the transition from PS4 to PS5 to be as um, like quick as before. So where where obviously the PlayStation 4 came out at a, you know a really decent price, um, everyone just straight away got the PS4, yeah. or lots of people straight away moved to the next gen, um, a lot more so than PS2 to PS3. Um, and and they they seem to be already conceding that the jump to PS5 is going to be a lot more gradual, and they've they've said already that they expect PlayStation 4 to still be their their highest selling uh, product, even when the PlayStation 5 is out. Um, so and I find that quite that is quite defeatist, um, and worries me about not only the price but mm. also some of the features this thing's going to have. So um, I'm I'm I mean I, th- I think I've said before like no matter what, as long as the PlayStation 5 plays games and I can get trophies, I'm on board with it um because i'm just so rooted into that ecosystem oh, yeah. but yeah i mean i wouldn't put it past sony to just completely mess this up like completely. yeah it's it's been done before <laughs> and i wonder also if yeah. <laughs> that whole expectation of feeling like it's just going to be not as as big of a you know switch over is also because mm. maybe the industry is turning to almost like this f- cell phone format where you have your various like releases of the iPhone and not everyone jumps mm-hmm. onto the new one, but they have the last model or the model before that, but they're still in that yeah. model or that, that iPhone ecosystem. Yeah. They're still buying the product. So maybe it's getting yeah. more towards that. These next gen consoles are going to have more power. So they're going to be the top of the line, but the game mm-hmm. still work on all of them, just like on your iPhone, your iPhone still works, even though it's the, it's the third model away from the new one. So I wonder if it's just yeah. kind of careering towards that, style so that's why they're not anticipating everyone just buying the next one because it's still going to run fine on your current one yeah um so i wonder but it is a, it is a weird time for these next gen consoles yeah yeah i mean i mean every week we're sort of, i'm sort of hoping that next week will be when we get to talk about you know the, the announcement right. so i mean it's got to be I mean, it's nearly the end of february which has been the sort of um the month where people have really expected something yep. to come um, in fact, I saw some rumors today. I don't know how concrete they were about a new date being, you know, rumored that they're going to announce something. But it's just, it's so hard to to know what to expect. Yeah, because uh, everyone was saying February, and now we're pretty much out of February, and nothing's yeah. happening. So, yeah, so hopefully tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cut to like September, hopefully where tonight. like, oh, one of these days now, you know, they're going to say yeah, something. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully tonight's the night. <laughs> yeah. All right, Callum, we'll end it there for this week. Uh, where can they find you online? Cool. Uh, so uh, again, probably Twitter, which is Bear Munro, uh, B A R E M U N R O, um, and yeah, I don't really use anything else. So if you if you fancy it, you can follow me there. Gotcha. You can find us for updates on uh, Twitter dot com as well. Uh, Twitter slash Plastic Heart Pod. All right, that's it for us this week. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. See you later. <laughs>